Hi there my friends, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Grab a drink, grab your sketchbook and supplies and let's have some quality art time together. So I'm starting a brand new sketchbook, it's a Talons Art Creation sketchbook. It measures 13 by 21 centimetres. Now I've popped the finished um, double page spread for you to see where I'm heading. But as I started, I was just looking at my reference images and not quite knowing what I wanted to do. So I thought I'd start with the polar bear walking and it's from a photograph that I took when I was in the Arctic last August. So I always sketch really lightly to begin with and you will see the lines slowly develop, just starting with vague shapes and swapping to a dark pencil now. So hopefully you'll be able to see the sketch as it appears. So just looking for basic shapes and no details, leave the details to last. And if you're painting, I knew I was going to be painting in gouache. I didn't want to put too many details in because they were going to be covered up by the paint. Hope everyone's keeping well. I know it can be a frightening experience for some people starting a new sketchbook, especially the first page or so. But I just like to jump in and if, it, if I make a mess, it's just... Uh, just what it is it's just a sketchbook it's for trying out new ideas maybe new materials and just having some relaxing time give yourself permission to play with your materials and that really is what a sketchbook is all about well for some anyway and it definitely for me so I hadn't tried one of these sketchbooks before and I wanted to see how well it coped with gouache and it coped really well. So I will be using this sketchbook in particular for gouache um, sketches and studies and things. But uh, just relax. It's only art materials after all. And it's only a page. And if you don't want to show anybody your sketchbook, that's fine. It's just for you. Just for you to, to practice and play in. So just quickly run through what this uh, video is going to contain for you. Uh, it's going to contain all the four sketches and then I'll zoom right into the painting that I did on the top right hand corner of the polar bear leaning on his paw and you'll get to see that from start to finish. But as I said just sketch along if you want to or just have me playing in the background if you want to uh, I don't know if there's any pearls of wisdom in this video at all, but I just, on this particular day when I started this sketchbook, I just wanted to relax. And the best way for me to relax is just to pick up a pencil and some paper and just sketch and experiment, really. If you ask my husband how I relax, it's definitely not when I'm watching a film. If I watch a film, I tend to talk through it, unless we're in the cinema. So, uh, yeah, I do get fidgety. But this is a lovely way to relax. A nice cup of coffee, listening to a podcast or listening to some music. Um, uh, yeah, just relax. So you can see the basic shapes slowly taking shape now of this little polar bear. I'm pleased to say I've been invited back to the Arctic um, in June of this year, so I'll I'll put a link to that in the, in the description. And the the idea last year, I guess, was a familiarisation trip. I was invited to the Arctic, as I said, in August of last year. Um, we sailed right the way around Spitsbergen, so so far north that there's no wi-fi no telephone um mobile networks or anything like that you're completely cut off from everywhere else it's fantastic it's a, an amazing experience and yeah a familiarization trip really to familiarize myself with the the ship and how everything works not not mechanically obviously but how the crew work um and we had landings in the Zodiac boats and we got to see 11 wild polar bears and Arctic foxes, Arctic puffins, 
uh, harbour seals and bearded seals and whales, um, humpback whales and oh, just amazing, absolutely amazing experience. And the idea really is for this year, it, they've invited me back over there on board ship this year is to actually be painting and drawing and sketching on sea days when there aren't any landings or between landings and as I'm sketching and painting if people want to bring along their art supplies then you know we're encouraging that and then people can have a go themselves at sketching what they've seen or what they'd like to see if they bring some reference images with them and I'll be there 24 7 um to encourage people hopefully inspire people to have a go and um yeah make the most of the trip really an added attraction i believe that somebody referred to me as an added attraction i don't know about that much but yeah so the um i've mentioned the sketchbook that i've started the pencils i'm using now these are erasable coloured pencils so they're not water soluble or anything like that just erasable and they're by Faber Castell I believe and they come in a variety of colours but I just tend to stick with um, a, a colour that I think is going to blend in if any of it shows through the paint <clears throat> gouache paint that I'll be using in a bit is just opaque watercolour as I said, I'd not used these sketchbooks before, didn't know how they'd hold up to uh, water soluble mediums and really, really surprisingly well with gouache. Um, although I didn't use any really wet washes of colour on this paper as it's not very thick. I'm just having a look now. It's £94. It is acid free, but it's only £94 in weight. And as if, if I was to work with watercolours or gouache on a watercolour paper, I'd be looking at using something like £140. So with this one being only £94, I didn't know whether it was going to buckle or whether the surface would um, peel back or anything like that. But it didn't. It was wonderful. And as I said, these pencils are erasable and I did use the eraser a couple of times and there was no problem with the paper at all. So I can thoroughly recommend um, this paper for gouache, coloured pencil, graphite, charcoal, etc. We'll be using um, one of the other sketchbooks. I have quite a few of them now, so all lined up and ready to use. And I will be trying out inks. I know you can use marker pens, sort of alcohol markers on them, but they do bleed through. So that is just something to be aware of if you're a alcohol marker artist or if it, that's something you want to work in. But if I do work in one of the sketchbooks in anything like that as a medium, then I will video it and show you. So, yeah, this was my relaxing day. It was... Uh, I painted the sketchbook over four days, did all the sketching in one go. Sketching doesn't take very long, but the paint paintings um, I did over four days, one each day for four days. Now what I'm doing there is just using a tissue, just a normal soft tissue, and it just blends the pencil down a little bit so it's not so stark and harsh looking. And sometimes when I'm sketching I'll do that between layers of a sketch so get your I get my really light lines down first maybe shapes circles ovals even squares or triangles sometimes then I'll rub over that with a tissue go back on with the um, erasable pencil again uh, form dark lines and what I'm always looking for is to redefine shapes start off with very simple shapes ovals and circles and things and get the basic proportions and there's nothing worse than working through a drawing and then realizing you've got the proportions wrong on something so it's always best to work with a light hand um, when you're happy with your basic proportions shapes and sizes then you can do all those lines down as I do with a tissue or you can use um, a kneadable eraser and lightly rub that over the lines soften the lines down and then start introducing 
a darker line where you actually want the lines to be, where you can see the shapes are correct and the composition and things are correct. So I hope everybody's keeping well and warm. It's damp and wet here in the UK at the moment, but hoping that spring's just round the corner. And then I'll get out and do some plein air sketching, I think. Looking forward to doing that. So again, just measuring things against themselves as well. Sometimes you'll see my pencil hover above the surface of the paper, making shapes but not actually touching the paper. And that's just me getting a feel of the shape that I actually want to place onto the paper. So it's like drawing in mid, <laughs> drawing in mid air. A bit like shadow boxing, I guess. I don't know if people still do that. I don't know if boxers still do that. But it's just bringing back that muscle memory. When you start sketching, uh, if you've never freehand sketched before, I know there's a lot of artists out there that um, encourage beginners to trace, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you're going to be starting somewhere. But don't be reliant upon sketching. Do practice freehand drawing as well, and you'll be surprised the more you do it, the better you'll get as long as you are concentrating on composition and proportions and things. And what you can do is if you're working from a reference image, you can trace that reference image and then freehand it and then place your tracing over your freehand drawing. And that way you'll be able to see um, the things that you've got right and the things that might need um, altering just a really good way to keep practicing. So I was hoping that the camera was going to pick up these lines a little bit more than they have, but uh, I'll know for next time just to sketch a little bit darker for you. If a sketchbook page or spread is something that you'd like to see more often, just drop it in the comments below and that's not a problem at all. Sorry for my hair getting in the shot, but I just wanted to get this part of the drawing correct. As I said, all of these lines are going to be covered up with gouache paint in a bit. This video is running at just under an hour. Uh, so there you go. For those of you that have been uh, asking for longer videos, here's one, one for you. And as you can see, I have tilted the sketchbook slightly, just leaning on that little wicker tray because the glare from the lighting that I've got in the studio um, was just washing the lines out a little bit for me. So by tilting the paper a little bit was easier for me to see without me getting my head in the way of the camera all the time. So just keeping it loose and only putting enough and just putting enough detail in for me. Now this is going to differ from one person to another. So if you want to do a drawing and then you want to paint on top, some people need lots and lots of what I call guidelines, lines to guide their hand when they finally go in for the painting part. Some people need less than I do um, and everyone else is sort of in the middle somewhere. So it's, this is so individual to every single person, whether they're a beginner or more experienced. You'll only know how much of a drawing to lay down once you've been doing it for a while. The worst thing is, is to not have enough. I guess you're better off having too many guidelines than not enough to begin with. And this is where being able to draw helps you being able to paint. If I go into a painting thinking that I've got all the guidelines down that I need and then I start painting and realise that I haven't got something in, maybe I've missed an ear or something like that, it happens. <laughs> um, being able to draw means I can paint it in without having to draw it in first. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, just start off with too many guidelines I guess if you're really unsure and then you can always work over them anyway if you're using an opaque medium.
If you're using a transparent, translucent medium, such as uh, tran normal transparent watercolour, some of your guidelines will show up um, if you go in too dark. So again, keep your sketches nice and light. And I think the, the main thing to keep in mind is just relax. I uh, hear of beginners being frightened of doing a drawing, you know, frightened of starting, especially you've got this big blank page staring at you. Well, one, you could just put a watercolour wash over the whole thing to begin with, just to get rid of that white colour and then put your sketch on top. If you're frightened of damaging your watercolour paper or whatever paper you're going to be working on, sketch on a piece of tracing paper. Then once you've got your sketch how you want it, transfer that sketch to your watercolour paper. And that will save you having to um, erase on a, a more precious piece of paper. As I said, this paper was wonderful and uh, no qualms now about moving forward with this sketchbook. I don't do a lot of sketchbook work, but this year I feel like I'm being drawn to do it, if that makes sense. I feel the need to do it, I guess, the need to sketch more in a sketchbook. If I'm working on a big project, I don't bother sketching it out in a sketchbook. I sketch it out on cheap pieces of paper uh, while I'm working out compositions and things and then transfer that over onto a canvas or watercolour paper or canvas board, anything like that, and paint from there. But these studies I know are going to help me when I get to the Arctic in June. Um, I'll, I'll already have a feel for the species that I'm going to be seeing there, hopefully again. You're not guaranteed you're going to see a polar bear. We were very blessed last year to see 11. I'm saying we, the people that were on the ship with me. I, I, when I was sent out there, I'd only been given two weeks' notice. And I flew out. It's three flights to get out there and obviously three flights back. But I knew on the way there, on the flights going, I wouldn't know anybody. I, the people that were sending me weren't even going to be there. So it was like, wow, must be mad. But uh, life's an adventure. It's not a spectator's sport. So um, you've got to make the most of these opportunities when they're offered to you. Another thing, um, if you want to delve a little bit more into sketching, is sketching from videos and DVDs, wildlife documentaries and things like that. Let them play and try and sketch along. You can always pause them if you want to... Um, tighten up a sketch a little bit more obviously these uh, wildlife documentaries are copyrighted so you wouldn't be able to produce um, a painting and sell it or anything um, from freeze framing a video or anything like that I keep saying video you know what I mean a film um, but you can practice um, for yourself you can practice your sketching skills, painting skills and things like that, as long as it's just for you. Then it doesn't really infringe um, the filmmaker's copyright because you're not profiting from it at all. OK, so the sketches were in. I did the, um, the bear at the top left to begin with and then the bear bottom left and then set the camera up and ready to rock and roll on this one. So surrounding the bear, I just mixed up a nice, um, quite a thick mixture of gouache, painted that round to create this silhouette effect, and then which is just plain and simple, going on quite thickly with the gouache. As I said, I didn't want to use um, too wet a wash on this paper, with the paper being so uh, thin compared to an actual watercolour painting paper. This isn't advertised as a watercolour sketchbook. It is simply advertised as a sketchbook and obviously the paper is um, sort of a creamy tone to it. Would be nice if they did um, a darker sort of a real mid-tone paper but uh, I've not looked into that yet. So all I'm doing now I'm looking at my reference image 
and I'm just seeing where the darks are, where the lights are and that's what I want to get in at the moment. Just concentrating on getting where the toes are, where the nails are and the darks and lights within the fur. And you've got to look through the surface layers of a photograph if that makes sense. You've got to see what's under all that lovely fine polar bear fur and just ma imagine the shapes that are underneath it. And one way of doing that is you can either blur your reference photograph slightly using uh, an app on your phone or you could use Photoshop or Procreate, things like that. Or you can squint. So I do a lot of squinting when I'm in the studio. And that's just to, if you squint, all you see are the contrasts um, and not the detail. And you want to get past looking at the detail to begin with when working with gouache. Lots of artists work with gouache and they go from dark to light. It's opaque, it can do that. I tend to go dark to light and then light to dark and then a little bit of dark to light so I just go backwards and forwards. But it's such an enjoyable medium and the time just flies by. It's, uh, it dries so quickly um, there's no no wastage because whatever's on your palette can be re reactivated just with water. The cleanup at the end of a painting session is simple because you wash your brushes just in water. I'm using deionized water in two pots, so one for washing the brushes and one for picking up fresh water. The paints are all Windsor & Newton Artists Quality Gouache. That. And I've just got the tubes, squeezed them into this little tiny palette that went out to the Arctic with me last year. And just playing with this tiny little plastic palette. You don't need much. You really don't. You could use, if you buy some paints, just buy some primary colours to begin with. You can buy them open stock uh, tubes. Just something to mix your paints on. So you could use a piece of plastic like this. You could use a tile, a ceramic tile, or a kitchen plate, as long as it's, um, you know, pot one. And just experiment and just play. The brushes I'm using in this were actually from a little pack of brushes from the pound shop. I know everything's not a pound anymore in the pound shop, so this little pack of brushes I think you get 12 brushes and it was like three pounds something and I thought yep yeah, they look okay they'll do just for having a play with I have got other brushes you can use your watercolor brushes with gouache that's not a problem the thing is gouache is a little bit of a, a thicker paint so you need your brushes to be a little bit firmer you don't want to be using natural hair brushes that are soft and absorbent I don't use natural hair. I like my products to be vegan where possible. And these little brushes are made with nylon, uh, taclon nylon. Golden taclon is a sort of a nylon uh, fibre. And they worked incredibly well. So I will be using these a lot more in the future. But as I said, you can use your watercolour brushes. You don't have to go and buy anything specific for painting with gouache. Now using different um, intensity of colour, so making watery mixtures and thicker mixtures too. Uh, dry brushing is one where you've got very little water on your brush um, just the paint okay just drying it off there I'm drying the back of the page as well and this stops it from buckling stops the paper from buckling if you dry the front and the back and as you can see that paper hasn't buckled at all so dry brushing is just having a very just damp not a wet brush just damp picking up the pigment and just applying that on top don't press down too hard and don't uh, let the top layers be too wet else they will reactivate the paint that's underneath. So you wouldn't want to be putting a big 
watery wash on now because it would lift the paint that's already there. If you find you're placing something down and you don't like it, obviously you can get a damp brush, go in, lift it out, lift it out with a tissue, dry the paper and start again. More dry brushing, building up the darks. If you see me keep leaning over, I'm just tapping my iPad so the screen stays switched on so I can see my reference image. Building in some textures, building in, just adding some darks. Keeping the brush quite dry. I think each little painting took, a, I don't know, a couple of hours each. Just relaxing. Probably singing along to, I don't know, Michael Bublé or something at the minute. <laughs> or listening to a podcast more lightly. Getting those darks in. And it's really freeing because you can really be really, really messy with the uh, the base coats that you're putting on because of the paint being opaque. You know that your uh, layers that you go on top with are just going to cover anything up that you don't like. So using one of the brushes out of the little cheapy pack creates a lovely um, point. Didn't lose its point at all. And I was able to start adding some more detail on top. So I'm going from dark to light now. You'll see how opaque these paints are because um, obviously the background is a navy blue. Well, it's a bit of a purpley blue actually, but it's very dark. And the mixture that I've got now is able to go over that. Not a problem at all. And there you go. Wow, we're over halfway through the video already. If you are painting along or drawing or sketching, I'd love to know what you're working on at the moment. I do read all the comments and uh, reply to everybody if they have questions. If you'd like to see me work, in a particular medium in a sketchbook just let me know or a particular subject then let me know a lot of people have been asking for airbrushing videos so that's something on my to-do list now so just moving the sketchbook round uh, so that I'm more comfortable still using that little wicker tray upside down tray <laughs> to prop the book up against just makes it easier for me to see what I'm doing and that's another thing when you're painting if you're uncomfortable it can be really hard to uh, get into the flow so if it means turning your drawing pad or sketchbook or canvas upside down or on its side or anything like that just do it being comfortable has got to be optimum it saves injury to yourself if you're sitting at an easel or a table for a long time been there done that <laughs> won't be doing it again so stay comfortable stay hydrated as well I, I, I drink copious amounts of coffee but some of it is decaf it's not all caffeinated and good lighting is another thing so make sure you work in either in natural daylight or get a nice uh, little light bulb that is daylight light bulb and work under that and you'll see your colours a lot more um, true as well if you're working under a daylight bulb. So these brushes were amazing, God, what a find. They came in a little plastic wallet cool when I've finished with the palette up on the right hand side when I've finished painting for the day I'll just spray that all with water uh, it comes with like a rubber gasket fitting top that goes on top and then a top that clips down 
and that will be good to go for the next painting session then. If your gouache dries out, don't worry. Um, if it dries out really quick, it can crack, but it's paint, it's fine. Just spray it with water 10 minutes before you're due to paint again and it should be good to go. And when your colours get dirty, the middle red looks dirty because it's got blue in it. Wait for it to dry out a little bit. Go in with a damp brush, just lift that pigment off and you'll be back to um, clean colours again. White's always the one that gets dirty, so I always have a tube of white paint to one side as well, just if I need um, some real fresh white put in on my palette, I'll just squeeze a little bit out of a fresh tube. But the one in the palette at the top, it's just above the reds, is fine. It gets a little bit contaminated from time to time, but nothing to worry about at all. I also have the jelly gouache cups. I use those from time to time as well. And if you're thinking of getting started with gouache, there's nothing wrong with those either. I've done some really pleasing paintings with those in the past. Obviously, they don't have any light fast information with them. So I wouldn't be displaying them on the wall or anything like that. But for sketchbook work, they're fine. So if that's something you already have or were thinking of getting, then yeah, feel free. But these Windsor and Newton Artist gouache, they are, you can buy them in a tube or you can get them open stock, which means you can buy one or two or four um, colours, you know, your favourite colours. If you're unsure which colours to go for, just get some primary colours, a yellow, a blue and a red and make sure you get a big tube of white because white is something that you will go through quite a bit when working with gouache. It's also worth getting a black or a Payne's grey too. As I said these paints dry really quickly. I didn't have to dry that pour with a hairdryer and I'm leaning right on it now. It's completely dry. They air dry very very quickly. If I'm working on a larger area, I will go over it with the hairdryer just to uh, finish it off. But apart from that, they're good to go straight away. If in doubt, blast it with a hairdryer or a heat tool. As long as your heat tool is not too close to the paper. And when you're working on the base coat, washes and things, make sure you're drying the back of the paper if possible too. Obviously the paintings on the right hand side, uh, sorry, on the left hand side of the sketchbook, I couldn't dry the back of that part of the paper because that is actually attached to the sketchbook cover. So that wouldn't have cockled anyway. That's why I wanted to get those two paintings done to start off with uh, before filming this one. Because this one is really putting the paper to the test because it isn't attached at the back to a cover or anything. It was more likely to cockle, but it didn't. Now working with gouache, gouache dry, if you haven't worked with gouache before, it dries with quite a rough texture. Obviously dry, this dries matte, but it's a lovely texture. If you like working in coloured pencils and, and mixed mediums and things, this is lovely because the gouache gives you added texture so you can put coloured pencils on top. Can speed up the process, I guess, of having um, a more detailed drawing, coloured pencil drawing, if you go on with some wa uh, gouache or watercolour base coats first. So a little bit of white gouache going on now because I don't want to lose that nice lighter coloured edge along the front of his face. And now I'm stippling. So what that is, I've got one of the brushes, I wet it and then scrubbed it dry, well dry-ish, on a piece of tissue and then I'm stamping the brush up and down into the white gouache paint and then doing the same on the paper. The hairs along the top of the bear would be very, very short, so I wouldn't want to be painting those in like I did on his paw. 
so what I'm doing I'm just adding a little bit of texture and obviously this is just gouache so if I go wrong I can either or if I do overdo it too much I can either lift it off with a damp brush or just wait for it to dry and paint over it again so just letting that break the edge there going up his um, head towards where his ears are breaking that line just with a few little hairs wispy hairs back down to the face keeping an eye on reference images is a must because the hair length and hair direction and hair texture on animals can change quite quickly depending on what part of the body of the animal you're looking at so if if a, a brush stroke looks good in one area of the subject um, it n might not necessarily look great everywhere so knowing that the hairs near it um, is forehead would be very short and some of them would actually be facing the viewer depending on what angle you're viewing the bear at all you're going to see are the tips of the hairs so that's a good place where the stippling effect technique can come in there you go went a little bit too thick there with the paint but it doesn't matter and if it's starting to look too white then I can glaze over it with another colour and glazing over gouache you've just got to have a very light hand it can be done uh, some artists say it can't that it'll lift the paint underneath but I know lots of other artists who are more than happy to be able to glaze over uh, layers of gouache and it is it's just about keeping a very light hand I think water management is the only thing with gouache that takes a little bit of getting used to especially if you're used to painting with watercolour um, but give yourself sort of half an hour or so and you'll soon get the, the hang of how much water to have in your brush I'm not that keen on using water brushes with gouache they're the the brushes where they actually hold water in the barrel and you can squeeze them to let little droplets of water out into the brush I like to be more in control than that when I'm using gouache they're fine for using ink tents which is water soluble ink or watercolours but when it comes to gouache I do like a normal brush to paint with and that way I know exactly how much water versus pigment I'm getting into my brush and this is another reason um, why it's nice to work with golden tackle on brushes um, if you go for I do have uh, fake oh, they're called faux aren't they faux squirrel brushes uh, faux sable brushes from watercolor painting but the trouble is they just hold for gouache anyway they hold too much water and you've got the tendency of the water to rush down the uh, bristles if you're not careful the fibers also when you dip in your brushes into your water make sure that there aren't droplets of water on that metal furrow part of the brush um, because if you start painting and there are droplets on that part of the brush there's a likelihood that they'll run down into your bristles and then into your paint or onto your painting surface and when that happens um, and you're not expecting it it can cause um, you to have to backtrack a little bit so building up some more colour heating him up a bit making him look a bit warmer we don't want it all to be white polar bears have got black skin and the, the their hairs are actually hollow fibres because that's what keeps them insulated and very reflective coats so they do reflect a lot of the colours around them so the polar bear at the bottom left, the the pinky lilac-y one, it was just something I wanted to do. Don't ask me why, I just fancied doing something different. The joy of a sketchbook. The joy of painting for you and not painting for other people. Uh, when it comes to commissions and things like that, obviously you've got to be a lot stricter with yourself especially if it's pet portraits got to be spot on that own the owner of whatever you're painting will know 
Um, his pet like uh, like you'd know a child, I guess. But when it's just for you, drawing and painting for yourself is always the best feeling because it's it's freeing, it really is freeing. Wow, I'm waffling a lot today, aren't I? <laughs> Okay, you can experiment with holding your brush in different ways as well if it, this is something new. Holding your brush upright like you've just seen me doing enables you to use the very tip of the brush um, instead of using more of the fibres of the brush with the length of the brush. Holding your hand further back along the handle um, gives a looser brush stroke. So it's nice if you're painting foliage and things like that and grasses to move your hand further back away from the painting, further back along the handle of the brush. That's why you'll see a lot of artists working at easels with oils and acrylics sometimes have long handled brushes and that's because they want to get their hand as far away from the painting as possible um, so that the brush strokes are a bit more freer, a bit more looser. The further towards the brush your hand goes, the tighter the brush strokes will be. So a little bit of glazing in there. I felt I hadn't got enough, enough depth and darkening the eye slightly. As I said, I go backwards and forwards. I roughly, nine times out of ten, I start out dark to light, but then I'll adjust it as I go. So not covering up the background washes completely, else it would have been a waste of time putting all those colours in to begin with. Letting some of them peek through between the strands of fur and the clumps and clusters of fur. And towards the end, and I don't know if I've included it in the video, I think I have, but I'm not sure. If the fur starts looking too rigid, then I'll just dampen a brush and just very, very lightly drag the brush over the fur in the direction that the fur is going. And that just softens the edges of each brush, brush stroke, but doesn't eliminate them. Just looks like a, a soft focus effect. You can see it on the back of the bear to the left of the page. So I've gone out, I've done, just worked that bear exactly the same as this bear, but at the end I just took a damp brush and just very, very lightly swept it along the fur and it just softens everything down. Oh, this just makes me want to go back into the studio now and get the sketchbook back out and start another spread. But I've got so much to do that I've not got time today. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe go in there and do some sketching tomorrow. In between painting other things as well. When you're painting on something like this, as I said, each painting took maybe a couple of hours. But that's not necessarily two hours just sitting painting. I'll get up, make a drink, come back, do a little bit. Working this small is lovely. It's uh, very manageable, especially when you've got a lot of other works on the go at the same time. But working this small can be tiring, more tiring than work actually working on a bigger piece. So keep that in mind. And if you are sitting staring at an artwork, um, like small, put in detailed in, or any artwork, to be honest, Give yourself breaks, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Get up, have a stretch, you know, make a drink if you if you need one. Take some washing upstairs, something like that, you know. Um, just to give yourself that break, it gives you a physical break, but it also gives you a mental break from it as well. It gives your eyes a rest as well. So if you're working close up like this, make sure occasionally you look out the window 
Um, take your glasses off if you need to wear glasses for close work. Take your glasses off. Look out of the window. Let your the muscles that control your eyes do something different by looking into the distance and focusing on something in the distance, and that will prevent um, any eye strain as well. So what I've done with this brush is the dry brushing effect as well. I've wet, wet, wet the brush in water, pinched it dry, and then between my fingertips I've splayed the bristles slightly and then gone into the paint. And it just gives you sort of a feathered effect on the brush tip. Makes working um, for to put detail in a little bit easier. I was tripping over my words then. <laughs> I think one of the troubles of um, doing voiceovers for videos is I don't want to keep repeating myself that something, <coughs> excuse me, that I've said in a previous video and them saying again in this one until my friend said to me, well, this might be the first video of yours somebody's watched. Okay, yep, note taken. It could be. So they wouldn't know if I'm repeating myself um, from another video. <laughs> Oh, I love gouache. It just goes on so nicely. It's so, oh, it's lovely. That l paint that I'm putting on now looks a bit like it's got a greenish tinge, but that's my um, camera skills, I'm afraid. That's my filming skills. Um, these were sort of uh, creams and beiges and, yeah, not green. It might just be my um, monitor screen that's showing it to be slightly green. But it's not. It's just so fulfilling. Painting anything, even the ones where I'm not happy with them, there's still, um, you know, you experimenting and things like that and some things don't turn out or you want them to to begin with. Even that's fulfilling because there's never a wasted moment when you're creating art. If it doesn't turn out how you want it to turn out, it's a learning curve. You've learned how not to do something or how you'd rather not do something next time round. And it also builds muscle memory. As I said during the sketching part of the video at the beginning, when you're sketching and drawing and painting, you subconsciously you're building uh, muscle memory, which will enable you to do things uh, better and easier the, ne the next time you try. Uh, I think that's why a lot of artists, including myself, can say they can look at a completed painting that they've done but not actually remember doing parts of it. And I think it's you go on to sort of an automatic mode, autopilot, and you're actually doing something that is second nature to you, a little bit like driving a car. You, you're not constantly thinking about oh, now I need to change to the second gear, now I need to change to the third gear. It's automatic pilot after you've been driving for a while. It's not something you consciously think of. And I think the same is for painting and drawing too. Now that is just a damp brush. That's what I was talking about earlier. Just softening the edges of strokes that have already been put down and that have already dried. And on to this pour. What a cute bear. Oh, they're so lovely. <laughs> Although I wouldn't want to be in the same room as one. <laughs> we saw one uh, in the Arctic feeding on a um, beluga carcass. It, uh, it hadn't killed it, I don't think. I think it was uh, scavenging. scavenging. Um, but, oh, the power is... Uh, tremendous it's just God. you see them on documentaries and things but until you're sort of you see them in action in the wild it's uh, like a completely different animal seeing them in the wild it's wow <laughs> yeah amazing absolutely amazing okay so working dot to light again I'd already got the base coat layers down on this paw and just building up some detail 
and texture and that's not physical texture none of this paint um, stands any higher than any other of the other, ooh, any other of the paint that's on the paper it's just a visual texture that I'm referring to yes the gouache paint does dry <clears throat> with a textured surface but it's not a texture that you would physically see if that makes sense how many times in one video can I say if that makes sense oh <laughs> So not happy with that shadow, wanted to go a little bit darker, deepening it with a little bit of red so it's not looking flat. And if you use black in your paintings, don't use it on its own, always mix it with something else so it doesn't look black. Shadow areas are great if you use purples and burgundies and things like that, or blues, dark blues. And highlights are nice if you mix lilacs in with them. It just livens things up. You just don't want to use black for shadows and white for highlights because it will look very false. <clears throat> so even where I've gone on for some white on the polar bear, I am tinting it slightly, as you can see there, with a little bit of cream. A little bit more dry brush in there you can see the bristles of the brush are splayed apart and it just makes it easier to paint fair texture by splaying your bristles apart obviously if you want a sharp edge then you don't want to splay the bristles apart you want to keep the bristles in a brush together going in with white now just along the edge and stippling so I'm stabbing the brush up and down in the paint splaying the bristles and then doing exactly the same on the painting if you're working with a bigger brush you can do that to make it look like it's got snow on it or you can use a spatter effect gouache is brilliant for spatter effects because of its um, thicker consistency you can spatter it with a, a toothbrush or with um, a harder bristle brush now I can't remember now if I go back and soften because um, the white that's up there, yes I do, so I do go back and soften it, just tinting it very, very slightly. <clears throat> I did tell you that I go backwards and forwards between light to dark and dark to light, going in with the darks again. And I will do that, just balancing a painting, even a tiny painting like this, just balancing it as I go along. The more you do, the more you'll see. I'm flitting from one area to, no to another on a painting. Um, is just keeping the balance of a painting. So that's the balancing contrast. It could be a balancing colour, a balance of lighting, um, anything like that. I will no matter what medium I'm working in, I will flip from one part to another as the painting builds up. And there you have it. All done. Four little paintings on a little sketchbook spread 13 by 21 centimetres. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. It's really appreciated. Drop a comment below if you'd like to ask a question or just leave a comment in general I do reply to everybody's comments if, if there's a question there I'll, I'll definitely answer it as best I can any advice you need just let me know and I'll see you all next time take care everybody bye